Bizarrely, some mornings I still wake up and try to stand up out of bed. You'd really thought I'd learnt this by now, that I can't stand up and walk. Yet for some reason my body's like, yes! And I was like, that didn't work. I thought I really would have learnt by now, but apparently no, my body is not that smart. Hi, I'm Claire, I'm 33, I'm from Cambridge, although I used to live in Leeds, and I'm a wheelchair racer slash student. We all have our own struggles. Some people's are just a bit more obvious than others. So my mobility impairment is what people see most obviously, but really for me, the inability to eat is actually a bigger problem day to day and is the one that's most life-threatening and puts my life in jeopardy most often. I'm unable to eat because I've got um, something called enteric neuropathy, which causes multi-organ failure, so none of my intestinal organs work properly. And that has much more of an emotional impact and social impact than, say, necessarily not being able to walk, because people just don't really sort of understand how abnormal it is not to be able to eat, not to be able to go out socially with friends and family. People are like, oh, what do you want to do? Let's go to the pub, let's go to dinner and people stop inviting you and actually that's really hard I think actually for sort of the social isolation that comes with not being able to eat. TPN is total parenteral nutrition which is intravenous feeding so I'm fed through a central venous catheter which is a line that goes from outside skin through a main vein and into the heart and that delivers me a great big bag of food. Intravenous nutrition is so important to me because Quite simply, without it, I wouldn't be here, let alone being able to race. I just wouldn't exist. I would have died of malnutrition. It comes with huge risks. There are risks of liver failure, of bloodstream infections, which can become septic. You know, I've been septic a lot of times, not necessarily because of my TPM, but because of other complications. And so you do know that each day you do run those sort of risks, but I think it shows to me more than ever that, you know, life is fleeting and it's so easy for it to go away. You do have to make the most of what time you've got and look for the opportunities and try everything you want to do because there's no point putting things off for a rainy day because some people don't get those rainy days. So as well as the intestinal failure, I've got something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder which has a variety of symptoms including things like hypermobility and dislocations and subluxation. But had I not got Ehlers-Danlos, I probably wouldn't have had the accident that has sort of stemmed 13 years of trying to find the correct diagnosis. For my accident, I'd gone on holiday with some friends from university. We'd gone out to Florida to spend two weeks on roller coasters, and we decided on the first day when we got there that we was, um, there was um, like a cable park, water skiing, was doing fine, um, and fell forwards, and unfortunately managed to, rather than um, fall into the water, Hit my head on the hit my head on the skis, jerked my head back, and uh, dam damaged the ligaments and the um, vertebra at C2 and C3. It's had a progressive impact on my mobility. So I presented originally with leg weakness, which has become more and more prominent, and then I sort of developed uh, upper limb weakness as well. So I've got quite poor grip and upper limb strength. I've always been very sporty. Before my accident, I was a rower and I rowed briefly with the University Women's Development Squad, um, then had my accident, had a long time out of sport. As soon as I was back to being sort of even half well enough to be back in a boat, jumped back straight into rowing basically, and within six weeks ended up at the national championships where I somehow came second. So I had some time out due to my health, um, sort of had a bit of a downturn in things, starting wheelchair racing and it was sort of one of those sort of not really planned transitions but one that I've absolutely loved, it's been really good for me. As much as I love rowing and rowing will always be in my blood, the ability as a wheelchair racer means that 
I can get my chair to places by myself, I can be completely independent, whereas with rowing I had to make sure that there was somebody around to get the boat out, make sure there was somebody around the bank to make sure that I was safe. I really want to go to Tokyo in the Paralympics to be the world's first international Paralympic champion on intravenous nutrition because we've always been told that it isn't possible to be this active on intravenous nutrition, that it just isn't possible. Just because nobody's done it doesn't mean it's impossible. It's only impossible until it's been done. People always ask me, how are you so happy? I said, well, what have I got to be sad about? I really, you know, I'm doing things that I love. I've got a roof over my head. I've got friends and family who support me. I've got enough money to get by. But yeah, don't get me wrong. I do have those days where I'm like, this is all rubbish, I'm fed up. One day there'd been about six or seven different things going on and I'm like, oh, just, 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 no, give me a break. Although I will no longer use that phrase because the last time I say give me a break, I broke a toe. So I learned not to say that. But yeah, I think I've also learned to find um, humour in the weirdest places as well. A delivery driver who came here quite often, he said to me, and I knew what he was going to ask because people always do this in a certain manner. He said to me, can I ask? Um, why are you in a wheelchair? So I very, very straight dead left went to him. Can't walk, mate, can I? And this guy absolutely fell apart. He couldn't work out what on earth he was meant to do in response to this. And he, he just sort of stood there flailing and, I, and sort of realised that I was laughing at him. And he went, oh, that's not quite what you wanted to know, is it? He went, no, but it was a fair response. <laughs> Quite often people say to me, oh, so what's wrong with you? I'm like, well, I've got an obsession with penguins and volcanoes. Otherwise, I'm fine, thank you. It's like, but why are you in a wheelchair? I'm like, well, but that's not what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong about me being in a wheelchair. I am disabled, not wrong. Racing has just got the best feeling ever. It's just that, you know, like when you're, if you've got the roof down in your car and you're driving, really quickly and it's just got that beautiful wind and just sort of feeling of peace it's a bit like that but you're doing it yourself it's amazing and sort of because obviously I can't run anymore obviously so it's the only way I can sort of get that full speed and sort of that feeling of freedom I thrive on that sort of other people being around there I don't care that they're male and they've got a lower impairment class than me I still want to be faster I want to be better than them so looking forward, had I been classified already, then this year I would have been considered third fastest in the world over 100 metres women for that classification. I don't think that's too bad going for my first season really, so it's, it's definitely a start. I want to be, uh, but it's not enough, I want to be first fastest, I want to be the world's fastest. There's no, third is not good enough, I want to be breaking world records, you know, I want to make my mark, you know, so, there's no, I can't sell for third place, it's just not enough, sorry. People say to me, oh, you know, do you, do you ever regret your accidents? Well, I can't really regret it. It happened. If we avoided doing anything because something might happen, we'd never get out of bed. So, so we can't live in that fear, you know, as they always say, you could get hit by a bus tomorrow, which, you know, everybody let's hope nobody does. But it is, you so you can't just be held back by that fear. Okay, fine, don't get out of bed because you're scared of something happening, but then something will happen because you're stuck in bed all day. So you've just got to go for it. There's no other option really.